Hey guys, we're hanging out in Langley, Canada, and I'm actually with a shop tech. Uh, actually, you run the whole shop in Langley, do. don't you? City yes. Cycles? Yeah. Okay, wow, upgrade. That's yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, this is Jason. Uh, you seem to be really knowledgeable. You, it sounds like you spent a whole year in bicycle school, like full time here in Canada. I yeah? did, I did, yes. I've been learning from this guy and it's a lot of fun. This has been really a uh, great experience because we're looking at two very similar bikes from Cube. So over here, we have the Touring Pro 400. Okay, and it's an interesting bike because it comes in a deep wave, a trapeze, mid-step is what I call it, or high-step diamond. Uh, and with the, the different frame geometry and the different layout of tubing, you get different characteristics. So like a high step might be stiffer. Yes. You could hang it off the back of your car using that top That's tube. That's right, yeah. But you're gonna have to swing that leg pretty high. Yes. Especially if you have- Especially going over that rear carrier. Look at this. I mean, this is a great carrier, by the way. It's got like a pannier hanger right here that you can clip on, standard gauge tubing. It's, it's welded like, I guess the support for it is welded directly to the frame. And then they have this adapter plate on top, maximum 25 kilograms, that's 55 pounds. It's got the spring latch that's inset. So if you do use a trunk bag, it's not pushing into the bag and maybe wearing it out over time. You've got an integrated light back here. You've got an integrated headlight up at the front, aimable. It is mounted to the suspension arch. So if that's going up and down and you're on really bumpy terrain, you could get a little bit of jitter with your lighting versus if it was up here. However, it won't really fit because we have the large and wonderful Bosch Intuvia display panel. I love this display because it is removable like this. You could take it with you. It's got a little micro USB port built into the side so you could actually run like a GPS or maybe an additional headlight if you wanted to. Kind of stuck down there right now. Um, I think about that for commuting when you have to park outside. It does rain around here and sometimes even if people are being careful, their bike bar scrapes into your bike. It happens. It, it happens. So let's let's dash over here for sure. a minute. This is this is a complimentary bike also from Cube. They have a huge lineup of bikes by the way. And remember I saw that was the 400. They offer a very similar bike in 500. Yes. It's for the higher capacity battery. Yes. Yeah, it makes a huge difference in, in range. Especially if you're someone who's maybe using that higher level of assist, climbing yes. a lot of hills, yeah. that kind of thing. So down here, this one also uses the 400 watt hour battery pack. It doesn't have fenders. It doesn't have integrated lights. This suspension, you'll notice that there isn't a compression and lockout clicker, and it's also not an air fork. This is just a coil fork. I imagine it offers similar travel. That one was 63 millimeters of travel. I believe this one is 50 to 60 millimeters of travel. So as well. a little so bit less travel? In, in the same sort of range. It might even, I'm not, I don't know about the weight. Sorry guys, I forgot to weigh it, but we did weigh that one and it's 52 pounds. And considering that it has all those, the, like the fix-ins and that welded on rack, that's not bad. No, that's quite respectable and it, easy to ride. It, it is, yeah. It's, it, the handling is good because the weight is low, it's centered. Um, it looks, it blends in. I mean, even this one, you can see that this is the uh, Bosch Active Line Plus motor, and they've done a great job of sort of, you know, black frame, right? So it, it matches the black casing. There's even like a skid plate. Both bikes have that. They have that FSA alloy chain guard that acts as like a, almost like a cover in a way. Your pants might slough over that versus touching the chain, and it keeps the chain from bouncing off track. You got the plastic sticker here to keep your frame intact, and then a plastic sticker on the down tube as well, there, there's a lot of a lot of love that went into this and this cool battery case cover that we're gonna get into in a minute. But coming back to the fork, it's a little bit downgraded. You don't have the lights, you don't have the fenders. The tires, they aren't quite as nice. These are a little bit more like off-road style versus uh, sort of a city slick. Right, so that would be more of a pavement specific tire and these fall more into the cyclocross category. Yeah, and it's interesting to see that. They've named the bikes differently. So this is the cross one and just like you're saying, cyclocross. That's right. Right, to, to me this is a, an interesting use of a very similar frame and a similar motor system, similar battery. Yes. Uh, and I, I think it speaks to the strengths of both the trapeze and the high step. Yes. yes okay, and the stiffness because they don't offer this one in a step through. No, no, this is only offered in the two frame styles, the traditional high step or what some people will call a men's frame mm -hmm. and the uh, the trapeze frame. They call it like easy ride or right. something like that. Easy access, easy access. low step, That's it depends it. on who you talk to. And I want to I want to call out here instead of having the battery right here on the down tube, they actually move it over here to the seat tube area 
And again, that's over on the other bike. I just, I wanted to call this out because this bike's like $600 cheaper. I um, mean, it might be a good option. You could always do a beam rack or, you know, try to add something yourself. They don't really have the bosses set up. They do have bosses down here for like a, a cafe lock. For that, they do give you the, uh, the brace on the threaded mounts at the rear. Okay. A simple uh, mono stay adapter off of the seat post allows you to run a standard rear carrier. That's a really good point. And thank you for calling that out because yeah, I really don't like the beam racks too much. You can kind of bump them when you're getting on the bike. Not only that, but they're very weight limited. And if you're riding your seat up a little bit higher, uh -huh. for example, I'm at the minimum insertion here, you run the risk with weight on a skinny seat post actually bending the seat post. Interesting, interesting. Wow, okay, so this, I told you guys, he's an expert. So let's go back over to this bike. This one's great for commuting. Probably in this configuration, You'd, you'd probably get some fender rattle, although they are fairly well connected, even connecting on the rack right here. You could probably take this on bumpier terrain or maybe a little bit of trail. I mean, that's a cycle cross. The tires are better, but it's the same frame. It is. Yeah. It's the same frame. So that's that's kind of cool. Comfort wise, this one's this one's definitely the winner. I was talking about the compression with lockout air, so you can sag it, lower the air pressure if you're lightweight like me. The fork itself weighs a, le a little bit less. And then back here, we've got a suspension seat post. Only 40 millimeters of travel, and the post itself is only 300 millimeters. So you were talking, how tall are you, Jason? Uh, almost five foot 10. Five foot 10, okay, I'm, I'm about five nine. Okay, so I'm also raising my seat up. We're both pretty active riders wanting to get that full leg extension. Yes. And look, you got the helmet with like the water protector and like all the gear. He had his uh, gloves on earlier. Yes. And I was like, Jason, is it cold? And he's like, <laughs> I don't ride without my gloves. It's gotta just one them. of my things. Gotta have them. I love that, yeah. So it's, again, like, high level stuff. I want to call out a bottle cage bosses on, on the top tube right there. You could use those for a folding lock or mini pump or nothing. And you could get a little bag and, you know, just unclip the bag, take it with you inside. We've got a comfortable Celery Royale look in gel saddle and you can look in and literally see and feel the gel. That's kind of nice. So there's a lot of comfort touch points, ergonomic grips up here, rubber locking. We've got Hydraulic disc brakes, I appreciate that. You know, and these are like three finger levers, a little bit of adjustment on the reach, 180 millimeter uh, rotor up front, dual piston calipers, kind of standard, 160 in the rear, quick release on both. So that's the nine millimeter axle with a quick release skewer. And then they have this kickstand here. And it, to me, it looks like a heavy kickstand. I can't say for sure, because Cube brands a lot of their stuff themselves, but it stays up. It's not one of those annoying kickstands that like, it, you know, the, the minute you move the bike, it wants to fling up. I appreciate that. If, if I can jump in, that kickstand is also adjustable as well. A little bit of adjustable height yes, or length? Yes, you, you can adjust the length depending on the fit. So if your bike is standing It's the one where upright, you spin it, right? right? You, you just turn, twist it. Just that twist is so convenient. You don't have to have your tool kit like right. Anya. Very easy. Uh, tell me about, uh, so the brake levers. This is something I've been calling out, the adjustable reach thing. Yes. It's not like... It's just like they can come in further without, before you had barrel adjustments on like That's mechanical, right. right? So you're simply adjusting the starting point of that brake lever. So let's say for example, uh, somebody who's gonna ride the same brakes but has smaller hands than I do. You yeah. need to be able to bring those brake levers in. Yeah. So you're, you're adjusting nothing more than the literal reach. And so it's like you still have to go out to get them, but then they they stay closer in. That's it's not right. like you're trying to get leverage when the braking exactly. action is right here. It's, when it happens here. your fingers are fully extended, you can't generate a lot of grabbing force. Do you know who that's also relevant for? People who wear gloves? Yeah. Because they're like padded, <laughs> you know, right. you're, you're losing a little bit of yeah. your... So I think that's really cool. Um, again, nicer, nicer like accessories here. Yeah. They got the rubber flap. The, the, the rear fender, there's a little bit of wiggle here, but the cool thing about plastic is that they can get bumped. They're not gonna get permanently bent like alloy, not gonna weigh as much, and they're gonna get rusty like steel. Exactly. If it gets scratched. So this is perfect for Canada and parts of parts of the country where it might rain a little bit more. Um, and then I'm, I'm guessing here, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident that this tapered head tube is is this tapered? Yeah, it is. It is tapered. So you could potentially upgrade the uh, suspension to something like hardcore if you wanted, especially on the, the cycle cross version you over there. Could. You know, get get your air fork or whatever, maybe yes. a loft or something like that, carbon fiber. Have uh, you seen those? Yes, that would be quite nice. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. And it'd match the bike really well. It would. So coming back to this one, right? Probably sealed bearing headset probably sealed bottom bracket. I think Bosch has their own like mini Isis blinds type of thing now. Yes, it's based off the Isis platform, but it's not exactly Isis. Yeah, 
interesting. German engineered. It's like the Sony situation where they're like mini disc and everyone else is like DVD That's or right. whatever. So I don't know, but I do like Bosch. They have a great warranty. It's like two year comprehensive. Uh, their battery packs are modular if you have the power packs and this does have the power pack 400. We'll get to that in a second. This motor is measuring rear wheel speed with that magnet and this sensor. It's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. And the active line weighs 7.05 pounds versus 8.8 on the performance line. So it's sort of like, you know, you're, you're making a little bit smaller. I, I just love the integration here because I've seen so many of these new Active Line Plus motors that's just got the bubble shape and it doesn't look quite as beautiful as this does. This is, this is tight. It's very quiet. Um, when you pedal backwards, the chain actually moves. It's, it's a standard size chain ring, 38 tooth over there. And I don't know, you don't have, you can pedal beyond like the maximum supported Absolutely. speed of 32 miles or 32 kilometers. 32 kilometers, hour, yes. 20 miles per hour. That's right. It doesn't, it doesn't have the, the, ca the, the drag, the right. reduction drag. And, and to me, that's never been a huge deal, but I want to hear your honest opinion. What do you think on the performance? Honestly, side? having ridden the CX motor for the last several years and now uh, being out riding the active line, I miss a little bit the the torque at the rear wheel. Yeah. But coming more from a mountain background, right? I, I, I do like that that higher punch of power. But I have to tell you, this is quiet. Yeah. It's smooth. It delivers power really, really easily. It is. Easily. Power. It can climb. It can. What do we? Are we gonna? I think we're we're gonna try rolling. Climb that thing in a minute. Here. Yeah. It, so I'm I'm with you. Thank you for that perspective. Um, having tried many bikes yourself. So coming back to other things, I feel like we've covered most of it, but it looks like there's a bit more of a rise on that stem, maybe like 15 degrees and we got a bunch of spacers. So you could flip it or you could lower it. There's a lot of adjustment that can be done. Um, the standover height on this one's a little bit lower. And with that rack, if that's loaded up, you don't want to like hit your shin trying to like swing over. So I actually really like the mid-step trapeze frames. Um, it certainly and, makes a bike a whole lot more rideable for a wider variety of people. For sure, for sure. And, and that means you and maybe a significant other or a friend or someone who might be a little less comfortable with, oh my gosh, electric bike, it's powerful. Oh, is it safe? I haven't been riding a yeah. bike. It's like, look, you got reflective sidewalls, puncture resistant tires, integrated lights. So even though it's black to help blend in like the, the drive system, yeah. it's still a really, I think, pretty visible bike. I think the big thing the trapeze frame lends itself to is frame stiffness. Yeah. Your true low step frames tend to almost feel a little bit frame noodly. flex that's right yeah so you get the the benefit of being able to step off the seat flat foot and not worry about where your undercarriage is uh-huh but you still have a nice stiff frame so performance okay. and access very well said jason um i think at this point unless you can think of anything i was going to go through the display no i i think that's a great idea we'll do that okay cool so i love this compared to the Pyrion. for me that's a that's a big upsell um, you can actually install Intuvia for a, a Purion bike. Yes, you can. It's just like 200 bucks or yes. something. So it's a little bit of a, you know, and then you're like, well, I've already paid 200, you know, for another 400, you get all this other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so the display, press the power button, comes on very quickly. Five ticks on that battery infographic. It'd be nice if it was 10 or a percentage or something, but they do have range estimate too, which is really dynamic. So if I press the plus button over here to go to the lowest level of assist, Eco, it says 88 miles. You know, we're, we're pretty full charged here. Maybe it could go 90, but you're really not getting a whole lot of support. It's it's very limited, helps to offset the weight of the bike and, you know, just give you a little bit of a boost. As you click up to turbo, it drops way down to 38 miles, which, you know, that's still pretty good in my opinion. And that's back to the efficiency of it these is. things. Well, also remember that it's constantly recalculating that. Yeah. So it's going to sample what you're doing at any given time versus what the, the drain on the motor is, or the strain on the motor is, and it'll give you a live a live readout of what your approximate range is. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is. And because you and I, we might pedal differently or weigh more, or That's right. you know, have more gear. You got the wind resistance going on I up do, here yeah. or whatever. So it's, cre it's really sweet to have that to help That's you. That's my preferred window to have it on when I'm riding that system. That's great, yeah, great feedback. Um, I'm, I like it too. And then there's this power like chart that you can't really see right now because we're not riding. If we press the I button here or here, it cycles through some trip stats. And then there's this light button, which activates the headlights, which is pretty cool. So, you know, here, here's the front light. I haven't actually tried it in super dark. It doesn't look like the world's brightest light to me. And it's sort of got this interesting beam pattern, but it does have the side visibility, which is nice. So you increase your visual footprint and then the rear light, it's positioned out of the way and it's got the integrated reflectors. So they're doing, they're doing good on that. And then there's a little light icon um, 
I'm, I'm just gonna press the I button and show you some of the rest of these stats here. So we got odometer, we've got trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and then back to range. Um, you know, this button pad is really easy to reach and you can almost navigate it without looking at it because it's, it's sort of tactile and there's this rubber I button here and it, you hear it click. Right, so I, I like this, and I actually like it more than the Purion. The Purion looks like this, but the buttons, they click inward, whereas this clicks downward, and these are more consistent in my experience. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, just the removability, all that other stuff. Do you have anything to add about the display? No, I think you pretty much covered it. I, I just touched back on the fact that the display is removable. Yeah. So for security standpoint, if you park your bike and you go in somewhere, pop the display off, stick it in your pocket. That's a good point. Or if you're someone who, you know, for a lot of demo events for electric bikes, there's actually like a set screw in there, there that is. you can permanently affix it. Yes. Well, not permanently. Someone could still Semi -permanently. come Semi-permanently. Semi-permanently. There it, we it go. It prevents somebody just walking by and pocketing it. Yeah, which would be sad, but, you know, or a kid just having fun and they throw it in the field. It happens. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> We're gonna go in that field later too, see what we can find. Go find some blackberries. <laughs> let's do the let's do the battery thing here because sure. we actually brought the key. And check this out. This really reminds me of like the mustache bikes. Uh, not only is there a plastic cover, but it's paint matched. So it matches this blue, this dark blue color. Really nice, high quality stuff. Uh, there's a button down here that you press, this little plastic thing. And then I think you just kind of slide it down and then lift up at the top a little bit, pull it off. So there's our old friend, the Power Pack 400. And remember, they do have a 500 watt hour version of this battery too, if you want. And maybe you have an older Bosch Power bike, you could swap the batteries or you could travel with this bike because lithium ion batteries, you're not really allowed to, to fly with them. You could borrow or rent a battery on, on site. There's the keyhole right there. And then we've got this little rubber grommet so you can charge on or off the bike. Um, I recommend charging, you know, every month or two if you haven't ridden the bike keeping that battery away from extreme temperatures, the heat and the cold can sort of diminish your capacity or even wear the cells out over time. Certainly can, absolutely. Okay, especially in Canada, it's like, you can get pretty cold. And then it can get pretty warm. And yeah, right, and so just imagine like the stresses that are happening. These batteries are kind of expensive too, it's like 800 bucks or something, so. Uh, have they gone down? Perhaps US dollars, uh, Canadian retail price were right around 11 or 11.50. Wow, yeah, but they are pretty reliable too. They are incredibly reliable. Uh, I've only ever had to replace one and it wasn't actually a warranty issue, it was a customer care issue. Okay. So, you know, as far as warranties are concerned, they're quite solid. Don't drop it. Don't drop it, don't don't put it in the bathtub. Right. Not a good idea. Not a good idea, people. Okay, will you do the, yeah. do the honors here? Sure. So Jason has the key, I'm gonna go to this other side. Got a nearly 180 degree turn and then the battery comes straight up and out. Yeah, and be careful if you're trying to pull, especially on the trapeze frame, if you hit this a bunch, you're gonna scratch up your battery. No one will notice because you have that cover, but I your heart, your heart will notice. And then right here there's a handle so you don't drop it. There's the plug. This one, I believe it comes with the two amp charger, which is a little bit lighter. Yes. More of a correct. value play. You know, Bosch has a four amp charger, which is nice, but I mean, this is the value bike, right? In some ways, even though this is a step up from the one, the cross one over there. I think that's about it. Um, there's even some, some space in here for dust and crumbs and things to fill up. So we might want to keep an eye on that. It looks like it might pass through and water can probably drain a little bit. I'm sure they've done a good job. The cabling, as a shop, you know, you do service a lot of these bikes. Yes, so having access to the cables, is that nice? It is, it's quite nice, you know, being able to feed new cables down through the frame without having to fight and curse and swear and yeah we don't want to have that oh no that's right and, and especially with this one having lights and everything too there's a little bit more going on there is yeah so okay. anytime we can have easier access to the frame at the end of the day it's a lower cost to the end consumer coming back in for those kind of services and that's we love true that. that's a great point we love it we love it okay let's put the all right uh, battery back on and we'll just take a little ride that's cool. I've never seen one of those before. Gimbal, yeah, and you can kind of like interact Steady with it. Steady cam for the GoPro. Yeah. Unreal. It's portable. You just, this one's a bummer because you got to watch out for that, that knob thing. Oh yeah. Or it'll, right now it's on follow mode and that'll like lock it. So gotcha. I've had to relearn. My old one wasn't water resistant and it, it did eventually break. It yeah. Just stopped, it got fried. So how about this? Uh, you take off, I'll follow you. We'll okay. go around the swirly thing and then at the top, before we get to the road, like somewhere on that that one, that deck, 
On the top the deck? The top deck, yeah. but not near the road. Scoot it back up. Stow that kickstand. Nice step through. Well, the other thing is that bike doesn't have a kickstand. So we had to lean it up against the sign. Sweet. It's going pretty well. Feels pretty stable. These tires are 28 by 1.75, so they have a lower attack angle, just more efficient. It's a good city size, uh, but the air volume, it's, it's more of a high pressure tire setup. Um, and that's where the suspension seat post and suspension fork really shine. Hey guys, getting ready to take off. You can see the chain, 38 tooth chain ring with an FSA alloy guard. Love that. It's gonna protect your pants a little bit and it acts as a guide because of where the motor is positioned. Uh, and then back here, 11 to 42 teeth. That's a pretty great range for like a city bike like this. Um, I usually see that on mountain bikes and stuff. Shimano Dior and it has the one-way clutch so it's going to tighten up if you want to or you can put it down to service the wheel It's going to make the quick release easier to work with love the plastic slap guard here the Cube does a great job There's even a plastic slap guard on the base of the down tube just to keep rocks and stuff from from hitting it and You even have fenders, so it's kind of overkill um, But I wanted to point you down here so you could see and hear the motor in action when I pedal I'm going to be using the highest level of assist and the cool thing about the Active Line Plus motor is that you can pedal backwards to do drivetrain service if you want to. There's a little bit of resistance, but it's something you couldn't do on the Performance Line motors. worked out pretty well and these actually have shift detection so when I was shifting gears it's supposed to ease off a little bit and just reduce the mashing potential so from here maybe you can see the suspension a little bit uh, I just wanted to point out that it's 63 millimeters of travel it's an air fork so you can sag it you know and hit your sort of your body weight I'm a little bit of a, a lighter weight rider so I like that it's definitely a nicer fork keeps the bike lighter too about 52 pounds total for this one um, and again, the Bosch motor here, this active line, it only weighs like 7.05 pounds versus 8.8 .8 on the performance line. However, this one doesn't support you up to 120 RPM. It only goes up to like 105. So it just means if you're pedaling too fast for the motor, you're, you're going to drop support and then you need to change gears in the back and slow your cadence. Not a huge deal. Um, something that, you know, for a city bike like this, it's, it fits and it's just so quiet. very smooth and the brakes are working great 180 up front 160 in the rear hydraulic so you know they're they're pretty easy to actuate it's not taking a lot of hand strength and the motor just starts and stops so quickly it's it's really responsive it feels very natural and i love how tucked in it is on this frame beautiful man you out of breath no the bike did most of the work <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome are you in turbo mode here i was oh, he i is. cheated i cheated we got a cheater oh my gosh well we we rode here from the shop it's just a it's been a beautiful day we haven't been getting rained on which is really nice thank you for your insights your you absolute know. pleasure yeah yeah excellent uh excellent background and experiences to draw from and it's just it's a pleasure um again he works at the city cycles shop in langley canada uh am i saying that right you got it Okay, well, awesome. 
I've done my best here, guys, but feel free to give me some feedback if I miss something or if you want to see something I didn't quite cover. I've got all the specs and really deep details back at the site along with several other like cube reviews and I'll keep doing this for the full written review, electricbikereview.com. Have fun, ride safe. We'll see you next time. See you guys.